you to take one of those songs this morning the first Sunday in the second month only you can do what no man can do only you can turn around every situation I want you to lift up your voice this morning and say father what men have said cannot be done come and do for me this year in the name of Jesus what men have said cannot be done what men have said is impossible what men have called not possible undoable come and do for me this year come and do for me come and do for me turn situations around for me turn circumstances around for me let this month be the month of new beginnings for me let your name be named upon me this month let my mouth be filled with testimony this month let the sound of rejoicing be heard in my house in the name of jesus let this month be my month of your glory my month of your involvement my month of your visitation my month of your encounter in the name of jesus thank you blessed father in jesus mighty name we prevail father we thank you for the number two the number of agreement the number of divine establishment and the number of double portion lord we are asking that this month you will answer us double for everything that your children have suffered it at let this month be the month of double harvest double blessing double joy double testimonies in the name of jesus what men have said cannot be done that they do for us this month in the name of jesus let our heavens open let our joy be full thank you blessed father glory be to your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray i want you to go to seven people and tell them happy new month happy new month what men said cannot be done will be done for us this month in the name of jesus and i welcome those of you that are worshiping with us from home the lord will bless you mightily in the name of jesus where men have said it is not possible that day is declaring to you it shall make it possible in the name of jesus god bless you happy new month to you happy new month happy new month amen god bless you please be seated in god's presence kindly fix this carpet the lord will bless you amen sit down majestically in god's presence thank you Isaiah chapter 40 verse 2 Isaiah 40 verse 2 Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished her iniquity is pardoned for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins I have good news for somebody this morning God says, speak you well to the people of ICB. <laughs> Say loud to them. Your warfare is accomplished. The New Living Translation says, your days of sadness are gone. The God War Bible says, your days of hard labor is over. I prophesy to somebody that your days of warfare, they are over your days of sadness they are over your days of affliction they are over in the name of jesus and to somebody else your day of hard labor it is over and i said to somebody your sins are forgiven your iniquities are pardoned your wrongdoing has been paid for i say your wrongdoing has been paid for and to somebody you will have double for all you have suffered you will have double for your pains you will have double for your challenge you will have double 
If that is you, say, I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I talked to you this morning on what I tried to double for your trouble. Double for what? Double for your trouble. And God is saying clearly to someone, he says, speak comfortably. Bring comfort to them. For every trouble you have had, you are getting double. What troubles are we talking about? Isaiah 61 verse 7 says, Isaiah 61 verse 7 says, He said, for your shame, you shall have double. There are people that things that are shameful have happened in their life. Things that must not be mentioned have taken place. But God says, I should assure you, in this second month of the year, where you have suffered shame, double honor is coming. I said double honor is coming. In that verse 7, he said, for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. But when you read it in the New Living Translation, it says, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. Who is God talking about? This month, double honor will locate you. I said double honor will locate you. He said you will possess a double portion of prosperity. I thought somebody will be rejoicing because of that. You are not just going to prosper, you will have a double portion. Double portion of prosperity. Double honor is coming to you. I say it's everlasting joy will be yours. There's a prosperity that will make you joyful for the rest of your life. There's an honor that will locate you. For the rest of your life, you'll be dancing for joy. May you receive it this month in the name of Jesus. And why did God say this? That you are going to have double honor, double prosperity, everlasting joy. The Bible says God hates robbery. Mm, he hates robbery. They've been robbing you. They've been cheating you. The Bible tells us, when you read in verse 8, he said, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct thy work in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord had blessed. Let me read that verse 9 in the Amplified. He said, your offspring shall be known among the nations. He said they are descendants among the people. All who see them in their prosperity. All who see them where? We recognize and acknowledge that they are the people who the Lord has blessed. How many people are they going to say at the end of this month, look at the people God has blessed. Bible said they will see their prosperity. They will see their honor. They will see what God has done for them. I say by the end of this month, where they have robbed you, prosperity is coming. Where they have robbed you, double honor is coming. Where they have shamed you, double glory is coming. If you are that person, let your amen be louder. God hates robbery. Now, please sit down. The Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 1, when you read in verse 15 to verse 17, he said, I am very displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they held forward the affliction. He said, Therefore, thus said the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts. And a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Cry yet, say, Thus yet the Lord of hosts. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. And shall yet choose Jerusalem. Now please, let's get this. God said, I was only a little displeased with my people. And then, I handed them over to the enemy, to the Eden. And they even treated them shabbily. It's true I didn't like what my children did. But then you know, no mother wants somebody else to help her discipline the child. Mm, doesn't matter how much they tell you that one person gives back to a child, the village trains the child. I want you to know that no mother is actually happy 
when somebody else is treating the child anyhow please know that <laughs> know that very well and so God is saying it's true they did what was wrong and I disciplined them and I handed them over to you but you went too far Way too far. He said, but now tell them I am returning to my children with mercy. I don't know what you did that made you to suffer all this while, but God says, I should tell you, I am returning to you with mercy. I am returning to you with mercy. He said, that house shall be built again. He says, cry yes, say, thus hear the Lord of hosts, your cities through prosperity will spread abroad. Oh, many years I used to pray this prayer into my life. People go to abroad because they are sick. People go to abroad because they have a problem or the other. People go to abroad to sweep the street. People go abroad to do jobs that they cannot mention in their home country that they are doing. But God said, true prosperity, I will spread some people abroad. That is when they are going abroad is because they are going to prosper. Did that person come to church today? You are not here to suffer. You are here to prosper. You are not here to no sickness. You are here to prosper. Did you come to church today? I know some people will say, oh, thank God I'm in America. I can go to any hospital and they can fix it. But you are not in America because of the hospitals. You are not in America because you are here to suffer or to heal wood or to draw water. You are not in America to come and be a slave or to come and be a servant. You are here to prosper. He said through prosperity, my people shall spread abroad. Did they come to church today? And I pray this month that where you have suffered all this while, God will return to you with mercy. Amen. Bible says in Psalm 102, when you read in verse 13, it said, God will arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time it has come. I don't know who is hearing me this morning, but your time to be favored, it has come. Amen. Your time to be favored, it has come. Amen. Double for your trouble. And I just told you that it's going to give you double portion of honor, double portion of prosperity for the shame that you have suffered. Number two, it's going to give you double portion for your persistence. There are some of you that you have been persistent in following God. Where others have been mocking you and saying to you, this God, church, church, every time, church, we can't see anything in what you are doing. Child of God, Double is locating you. In 2 Kings in chapter 2, they made jest of Elisha when he was following Elijah. Everywhere Elijah was going, Elisha was going there. He said, the man you are following, don't you know he's about to be taken away? And he told them, hold your peace. Maybe they have made jest of you. Every time church, every time church, you better sit down and do something. And you have told them, hold your peace. But the Bible says, when they crossed the Jordan, in verse 9, Elijah asked Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I be taken away. And Elisha said, all I want is double portion of the spirit you carry. And Elijah said, what you ask is a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taking up, you will have it. I don't know what they told you is hard. But there is a God of all flesh that nothing is hard for. What people have been saying is hard. This month, God will make it simple for you. What has been difficult to achieve, this month you will achieve it. If you believe it, say better. Amen. What was Elisha asking for? Double portion. But really what Elisha was asking for is the right of the firstborn. When you read in Deuteronomy 21, between verse 15 and verse 17, the Bible talks that the right of the firstborn is the double portion. And what that simply means is the right of inheritance. Whenever there's a family and they write a will, in Israel, the firstborn we have double and the other children we have one one portion. 
But I say to somebody this day, wherever you have been in shame, or you have been in pain, or you have been in anguish, the right of the firstborn will come to you. I say that right of the firstborn will come to you for your persistence, for your consistency. Go and read your Bible and study it. God, after he brought Israel out of Egypt in Exodus 12, he made it known to the children of Israel that the firstborn belonged to me. But the Bible tells us that a time came in the wilderness when they made the molten calf. And God said, Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? And the Bible said, the tribe of Levi, they came to the Lord's side. And God said to them, wipe out all those who had committed these sins. And they did so. And God said, it is true I said that the firstborn is mine. But from now on, I take the Levites. They belong to me. That day, the Levites were not the firstborn. But because they were persistent, consistent with God, they got the right of the firstborn. I don't know who is listening to me this morning. And you have been consistent with the living God. May the right of the firstborn, the double portion, may it be released to you in the name of Jesus. There are some firstborn that don't know their right or don't know the value of their right. A good example is Reuben. Bible makes us to understand that Reuben lost the right of the firstborn because he went to sleep in the bed of his father. Bible tells us in Genesis 48, when you read in verse 21, God was transferring that right of the firstborn even to Joseph. And Jacob said to Joseph, look, I'm reading New Living Translation. I am about to die, but God will be with you and will take you back to Canaan. The land of your ancestors. And beyond what I have given your brothers. Beyond what I have given your brothers. I am giving you an extra portion. That I took from the Amorites. With my sword and my bow. I prophesy to you today. That even where you are not the firstborn. Or you are not even entitled to it. By the mercy of God this month, the right of the firstborn, the right of inheritance, receive it in the name of Jesus. But what did Reuben himself, the firstborn, who did not value that right, what did he get? Genesis 49. The Bible makes us to understand when you read in verse 1 that Jacob called his sons together and he decided to bless them. And this was the blessing of Reuben in verse 3. He said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn. My might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Firstborn that will not excel. I tell people there are some firstborn who don't know the value of their position and they have lost that right. There are many firstborn who are hearing me today that it is their younger brother who is feeding them. There are many firstborns who are hearing me today that it is those that are junior to them that is taking care of them. Every curse. That has been going around with you because of an error you made as the firstborn. By the mercy of God this month, that curse shall be wiped out. I said, That curse shall be wiped out. Whatsoever it is that you have suffered all these years because of an error you committed as the firstborn, I pray that by the mercy of God, that error, that error is paid for in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 33, when you read in verse 6, Moses was blessing the people of Israel. Just like Jacob was making pronouncement over the children, Moses was now pronouncing blessings upon all the tribes. And when he got to verse 6, he said, let Reuben live and not die. 
Let not his men be few. Because of what the father of Reuben had pronounced over him, where Joseph had double portion, even the one portion that Reuben had began to go down. It was nose diving. But when Moses came, he said, it is true you committed an error. You slept in the bed of your father. But I come to you as your pastor. I come to you as the prophet of God set over you. And I'm declaring over you, you will live, you will not die. I say you will live, you will not die. You will not be few anymore. You will continue to prosper. You will continue to increase. May the right of the firstborn be restored to you. In the name of Jesus. If that is you, let your amen be louder. Thank you, Jesus. Sit down. So double portion means the right of the firstborn. Like I told you, some people don't know the value of that right. And so they waste it. You know the story of Jacob and Esau. Esau sold his birthright because he was hungry. Bible says Jacob was, I mean, uh, Jacob was hungry and decided to cook. Esau too came from the field. He was hungry. Two men were hungry. But because Esau did not have a control on his appetite, he said, this hunger will kill me. And the Bible tells us, Jacob who was hungry too, gave him the food and said on one condition, give me your birthright. And the man said, what's, my, what's a bat right to me? And, and you're talking about hunger. You're talking about bat right. And he gave away his bat right. He made the statement. And the brother collected it. One pastor was sharing with me about his children. They were going somewhere one day. And then the elder one wanted food. And they were going to give the food to the younger one. And the father said, if we give this to you now, he will take your place. He said, I don't mind. Give me the food. And the father said, ah, no, God forbid. He said, you mind. <laughs> I will pray for you, you mind. Though they are children. But as a little child, he said, I don't mind, I want the food. They are telling, be patient, let's give to your younger one now. Then when we get to the next stop, we'll get you your own. But he was so eager to have the food. And the father said, I mind for you. If you don't mind for yourself. <laughs> Amen. I pray this afternoon, by the mercy of God, whatsoever had made you to lose that right of the firstborn, food, appetite, the loss of life, and you have thrown away what God gave to you that is valuable, by the mercy of God this month, double portion will return to you I said double portion will return to you number three apart from double meaning the right of the firstborn double is also talking about giving you double from your affliction double from your captivity and some people will say oh pastor I'm not in the prison yes I agree but are you better off than the people in the prison? That's the question. The people in the prison, many of them have a bed to sleep. They have clothes to wear. They have three meals to eat. So you need to begin to ask yourself, are you better off? In the book of Job chapter 42, when you read in verse 10 to 12, the Bible says when the Lord turned the captivity of Job, when he prayed for his friend. The Lord turned the captivity of Job. The Lord gave to Job twice as much as he had. Twice as much as he had. Why? The captivity had been taken away. Whatsoever captivity you have found yourself, the captivity of sin, the captivity of poverty, the captivity of sickness, the captivity of affliction, the captivity of joblessness. This month you have entered into by the mercy of God. God will give you double in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 12 that the latter end of Job was better than his beginning. 
And then they began to give a list of the things he achieved. By the end of the month of February, I prophesied to somebody, when you are taking stock, you will find out that what you have is double in the name of Jesus. I say it is double in the name of Jesus. I don't care how long you have been in bondage. I don't care how long you have been in captivity. But by the mercy of God, you are returning with double. Where you are sitting down, say, Father, turn around my captivity and release double to me in the name of Jesus. Release double to me in the name of Jesus. Release double, release double, release double, release double, release double, release double, release double to me in the name of Jesus. Release double to me in the name of Jesus. Double testimony, double joy, double glory, double honor. Le ma ye kete le bopo ye kete rapopo ye katalabo ye li ma ye kete li mos eriba pa ye o rapa pa ye kete li mosuta li papa ye kete o rapopo ye kete li mos ekata o rima ma ye kete li mos eliba o rapa pa ye kete. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. By the mercy of the living God, whatever captivity you have found yourself, mercy will deliver you. And double testimony will locate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe and you agree, say better. Amen. Amen. When you read in the book of Genesis, the Bible makes us to understand the story of Jacob when he was returning back to his fatherland and he was afraid of his brother Esau. <laughs> the Bible says Jacob sent messengers ahead so that they can be able to go and appease Esau that he is coming. But Bible makes us to understand that Jacob declared to God in Genesis 32 in verse 10 he said I'm not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of the truth of all thy truth which thou hast showed unto me thy servant with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now I am become two bands another version says give us the new living that verse 10 he says, now my household fills two large camps. Another version says, I'm returning with two companies. Jacob was running away from Esau who wanted him dead. Jacob was in the house of Laban who treated him several times. That was some form of captivity. But when Jacob was coming out, he did not come out empty. I don't care what you have suffered in America. I don't care what you have been suffering before now. This month, the God of double portion is going to make you to return double. Return double. Return double. I like the way Jacob puts it. He said, when I was crossing this Jordan to come into this strange land, I came with a staff in my hand. All I had was a staff. Some of you, all you had was a portmanteau. That's all you had. But if today you say you want to return, you will not return with a portmanteau. <laughs> you are going to return double. You are returning double. Amen. Uh, Somebody is laughing. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, how did you come? <laughs> Under the wall? <laughs> above the wall? Through the wall? How did you come? 
So no wall could stop you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If no wall stopped you when you were coming, by the time God finishes with you in this land, you will have the testimony of double blessing, double joy, double lifting, double promotion in the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 9. The Bible says in verse 11 and 12. He said, As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. He said, Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Let me read it in the New Living Translation. Verse 12. He said, come back to the place of safety. All you prisoners who still have hope. Ask your neighbor, do you still have hope? He said, I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. Did you come to church at all? Oh, I, I ask your neighbor, you don't have any trouble? You've never fell into trouble? Trouble has never visited you? Oh, well, for me, pastor is talking about me. For each of my trouble, I'm getting double blessings. Now, now, now if, if, if you ask me, how much troubles have I had? I, I mean, I, I mean they're they are, they are, they are uncountable. Now, for each of them, God says, I am getting what? Double what? Double blessings. For each, for each one, for each one, for each one, for each one. He didn't just say double blessing. He said for each one, double. If you had 12 troubles, how many blessings are there? If you had 20 troubles, how many blessings are there? Did you do arithmetic? Are you sure? I pray this morning by the mercy of God in this month of double portion wherever you have suffered trouble affliction may the blessings of God come to you double for each one in the name of Jesus but I want you to please look at it he said prisoners that still have hope so prisoners that don't have hope anymore who have given up I can't go to that church anymore I pray, pray, pray. I've not seen anything. I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. Nothing has happened. Where your hope is lost is gone. But where did he say they should come? He said, turn you to the stronghold. He said, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners. The new living said, because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners. There is a covenant in the blood of Jesus. On Tuesday now, we are going to have the communion service. It's a time of reenacting the covenant. To say, oh God, the covenant of your blood. You say, each time we provoke that covenant, everyone who is in a prison, everyone who is in captivity, that you are going to give them double for each of their blessings. Let me tell you some things about prisoners that people don't know. Prisoners don't perform their own desires. They are compelled to live a regimented life. Wake up at this time. Sit down at this time. Okay, they are not ready to sleep. Go in. Time out. Light out. They just a regimented life. Are you doing what you desire in life? Or you are just living a regimented life? Wake up at a time. Run to the, to the, to, to, to the, to the train line. Get the train, sub train. Oh, two hours on the train. Get back again. Two hours again, you are getting back. It's a regimented life. It may be true that you say you are not in the prison, but how much liberty do you have? So people don't even have the liberty to even come to church. We thank God that you made it today, Sunday. But some people are somewhere in their regimented schedule. They are somewhere in their regimented schedule. They can't break away. They break away, they lose their job. But I pray this morning that by the blood of the covenant, whatsoever it is that tied you down, it is letting you go. 
is letting you go. There are some people who came to America and did not even know this kind of life is the life we live. Mm. The other day, somebody came to visit us and the person said, call the husband and said, America is hard though. <laughs> Say, for three days now, I've not seen pastor. And mommy, hey, before we wake up, mommy has gone. I said, ah, wow. And the husband said to her, you said we should go to America. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> People of God, dollar is good. But there's a price to pay. But I pray that in this land, this same land, by the blood of the covenant, the God who brought you here is going to give you double in the land. I said that God is going to give you double in this land. We reenact that covenant. And I give you a good example. You know, I told you double portion is having the inheritance of the firstborn. Joseph was in Egypt as a prisoner. But when Pharaoh was looking for who to take over on the throne, he didn't look for an Egyptian. He didn't even look for his family member. The person they found was Joseph who had been in prison, who had suffered captivity, who had suffered so much, but God did not forget him. I don't know who is hearing me. This month you are entering into a surprise breakthrough. A surprise breakthrough. A surprise breakthrough. We locate you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Bible says in Genesis 41, when you read in verse 14, by the time they were making Joseph to come out of prison, the Bible says they brought him out hastily. I don't know who is hearing me. They are taking you to your palace hastily. They are bringing your double blessing hastily. They are bringing your double promotion hastily. They are bringing your joy hastily. If you are that person, accept a better amen. Number four, double means establish. It means what? When you read in Genesis 41, when Joseph was interpreting for Pharaoh, he said in verse 32, that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. I don't know who is hearing me. Every promise I have been sharing with you today, is established by God and God will surely bring it to pass very very soon in the name of Jesus but we need to learn something about establishment the word establish simply means to make something to become permanent that is there is something that God will bring to you a double blessing that when it comes to you will be permanent with you for life nobody will be able to take it away Somebody's green card will be permanent. Somebody's citizenship will be permanent. Mm, I know why your amen is like that. Some of you were born here. So you don't know the value of it. But some of us, we know where we went through. And even me, I didn't go through much. Didn't go through much. I got somebody waiting to have green card for 17 years. You are hearing them now. Let them tell you their story. How they were living like rat. When their contemporaries were leaking like a living like elephant. Why? Because they didn't have documentation. And suddenly people who are children of the living God, royal priesthood, holy people, peculiar people, are now operating like slaves. All just because of documentation. But there is a God in heaven who can turn tables around. Who can make the story to change. I pray that this month you will be divinely established. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says in verse 9, He said, Lo, I come to, said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. I told you that two is the number of divine establishment. Two, double, simply means something will be established. Bible says he takes away the first and then he establishes the second. The first month of the year has gone. This second month will be your month of divine establishment. 
I said this month will be your month of divine establishment. Oh, Samuel. You remember Samuel? He got the firstborn inheritance in the house of Eli. But what happened was, God took away the family of Eli and his children and said, I reject this one. And Samuel, that in his lineage, nobody had ever been a priest, had the voice of God. And from that day, Samuel became a prophet and was established in the land. Bible tells us when you read in 1 Samuel chapter 3, in verse 19, the Bible said the Lord did not let any of the words of Samuel to fall to the ground. And that all Israel knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet. That is, this matter is settled. It's irreversible. Samuel is what? Established. To be what? A prophet. I don't know who is hearing me this morning, but I prophesy to you today that no matter what you have suffered in the land, you are established for greatness. I said you are established for greatness. Look at the story of Saul. Saul was king. But Saul was taken away. And David was brought in. When David was brought in to take over from Saul. Something had happened in 1 Samuel chapter 13. When you read in verse 9 to 14. 1 Samuel 13 verse 9 to 14. The Bible says that... Saul was told to wait for the prophet Samuel to come and offer the sacrifice. But before Samuel arrived, Saul had offered the sacrifice. And the Bible says Saul, Saul had hardly finished, scarcely finished offering the sacrifice when Samuel showed up. And Samuel said, what did you do? And he said, the people pushed me. The people pressured me. Ah, uh, and Samuel said, if only you had waited, your kingdom would have been established. But now it shall be taken away from you and given to another person. Do you know who that other person is? David. i give you another example, Vashti. The king said to Vashti, come. I want to let people know how beautiful my queen is. She was the only queen in the palace. And Vashti said, I too am having a banquet. I don't have the time to answer the king. Uh, she had forgotten that the husband in the bedroom is different from the man on the throne. <laughs> in the bedroom is your husband. And you can do what you like. You like, you rub his head, pull his beard, pull his nose. You are in charge. He belongs to you. But on the throne, is the king and when is the king he is compelled by the rules of the land to operate by the rules oh have you heard before where they say that justice is blind that is even a judge cannot save his own child when justice is presented so it doesn't matter how much this king loved Vashti the people who were there said oh king if you allow this matter to go, all women in the land will not respect their husbands. This is not only your family matter. This is a constitutional matter. The constitutional lawyers came <laughs> and they began to read the constitution to the king. You can't... You know when judges say, my hands are tied? The hand of that king was tied that day. He couldn't stop it. And they said, what do we do? They said, look for another woman. Somebody helps to replace her. She must be disciplined. And then Vashti lost the throne. Esther came instead. God took away the first. Established the second. Why? Because an error was committed. In this month of divine establishment, every error that will make somebody to lose their double portion, I pray that you will not commit that error in the name of Jesus. Oh, please, please sit down, sit down. I'm concluding. Look at all the examples I've given you. When double portion was meant for Reuben, an error made him to lose it. Are you listening to me? Reuben, the firstborn, slept in his father's bed. He lost that double portion. When double portion was meant for Esau, 
an error made him to lose it. Why? He could not control his appetite. Oh, there are some people who say, I can't fast. Oh, I can't fast. We are fasting 49 days now. Today is the 24th day. Am I correct? 24th day. Almost halfway. And some people's bellies, they are God. Child of God. <laughs> May your case not be like the case of, of Esau. Who sold his birthright and lost the double portion. Oh, when double portion was meant for Saul, the king, the error people pushed him and he did something he should not have done. He offered sacrifice. When double portion was meant for Vashti, as the first wife, she committed an error. Today I pray for you. The error that steals people's double portion. The error that takes away people's double blessing. The error that makes people to lose their testimony. You will not commit that error. In the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up on your feet this morning. This is the month of double testimony, double blessing, double joy. But I pray that the error that makes people to lose their double joy. You will not commit that error. Lift up your voice to heaven and say, Father, keep me from error. I will not lose my double testimony. In the name of Jesus, keep me from error. Keep me from error. Keep me from error. Keep me from error. The error that makes people to lose their double portion. Keep me from that error. Keep me. Keep me, oh Lord, from that error. Keep me, Lord. Keep me from that error. Keep me from that error. Kalabu sheka talabaye. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I think this one, the pastors, the ministers will most likely know the value. Oh, Elisha, what do you want? That you are following me persistently. You are persistent. What do you want? He said, I want double portion. He said, well, what you're asking is a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taking away, you'll have it. Elisha got it. Double. When Elisha returned, the Bible says all the other sons of the prophet, they came and they bowed to him. And Elisha was performing wonders. But Elisha had the servant, Kehazai. Kehazai. When somebody just came to see his master, and Gehazi was to go and tell him to go and bath in the water of Jordan. And Gehazi said, my master said, go and bath. And the man went to bath and he became healed the seventh time. And the man came back to Elisha and said, look, I want to give you this. I want to give you this. And Elisha said, no, no, no. I'm not taking anything. Please go with your stuff. And Gehazi's eyes Huh? What did my master say? So when Naaman had gone far, he was like, Master is not seeing me. And he went after, he said, Actually, my master said he forgot that uh, you should, there are some people that are coming, we need to give them some things. So he said, I should collect those things from you. And then he collected them. And before he got to the house, he kept them somewhere. Gehazi! Ah, yes, master, I'm here. Where have you been? I've not gone anywhere. And Elisha said, didn't my eyes go with you? When you were collecting from Nama. As you have collected, collect the leprosy too. Elisha had double of what his master had. Gehazi will have had double of what Elisha had, which will have been four times what Elijah had. But what he got instead leprosy if Gehazi knew that if he just denied himself that day from collecting that cloth cloth if he knew all he needed to do was to restrain from collecting the cloth that his life would have been a different one I'm sure he wouldn't have done it the error that you will commit that will steal your destiny from you I pray today by the mercy of God. God will keep it far from you. God will constrain you from that error. God will keep you from that error. Lift up your way and say, Father, 
the arrow that will steal my destiny from me. Keep me far from that error. Keep me far from that error. Keep me far from that error. Keep me far. Keep that error away from me. Keep that error away from me. Keep that error. Keep it away from me. In the name of Jesus. What I will sell, what I will buy, what I will give, what I will collect, that will take away my joy, that will take away my peace, that will take away my destiny. Keep it far, keep it far. Keep it far. Keep it far. The Lord who constrained Abimelech, constrain me from error, constrain me from error. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. We bless your name. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I pray for you this afternoon that God will be involved in your matter. I pray for you that you will not be left alone. You will not be left to yourself. When the temptation to commit error is knocking on your door, the Spirit of God will constrain you from error. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you by the blood of his covenant that whatsoever had kept you in captivity we let you go this month in the name of Jesus. For every sorrow, every trouble you have had, God will give you double blessings in the name of Jesus. I pray that this month of February, the second month of the year, will be the month of double testimony for you in the name of Jesus. Your joy will be full. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the people say good amen. Let the church of God say loud.